Grand Moff Tarkin was perhaps one of the most important and best commanders of the Imperial regime, and he had unwavering loyalty to his oldest ally Sidious. But what would have happened if Tarkin replaced Sidious as Emperor, and how would he do it? Make no mistake, from now on failure will have consequences. Agent Callus, you will dispatch probe droids to every known location of insurgent activity on Lothal. We will discover the whereabouts of these criminals and we will make examples of them. Now, Tarkin had unwavering loyalty to Palpatine as he was really the reason that Tarkin had been so successful in his career as a whole. But for this theory, we're going to say that Tarkin takes over the Empire. But why would he do this, aside from Sidious dying, which is kind of generic, so I didn't want to go with that. Well, if we look into Star Wars Legends, there is a reason he may actually rebel against Sidious. In Star Wars Legends, Tarkin has a son, Gerosh Tarkin, possibly the only other person in the galaxy Tarkin really cared about. Now, Gerosh secretly abandoned the Empire after refusing to commit atrocities. This resulted in Sidious ordering his execution. He then blamed it on rebels. Now, in Legends, this is one of the main reasons why Tarkin has such a hatred for the Rebellion, for taking his beloved son from him. So, for this theory, we're going to say that Tarkin's son exists and he is killed on Sidious's order. However, Tarkin finds out somehow and decides that this betrayal by his oldest ally is inexcusable. So, what does he do? Well, Tarkin's a fairly collected person, so I doubt that he'd do anything risky. And he knows that Sidious is an incredibly resilient opponent, so I believe that he would bide his time until he was ready to strike. And I see no better time until he is put in charge of the Death Star. Now, this is the pinnacle of his career. He's the Grand Moff, controls majority of the Outer Rim, possesses a considerable portion of the Imperial Fleet, and is now, after the Battle of Scarif, the director of the Death Star. And we'll say that Sidious doesn't detect his plans, so he believes that Tarkin is still totally loyal to him. So, during the events between the Battle of Scarif and the Battle of Yavin, Tarkin is particularly powerful. So, what does he do? Well, he uses the battle station and targets Coruscant. You see, Coruscant is the seat of Sidious' power. That's where he resides in the Imperial Palace. As well as this, it houses a great deal of Tarkin's nemeses. Rival Moffs, admirals and politicians all swarm around Sidious' power base on the system. For this reason, Tarkin can likely destroy majority of his enemies in one fell swoop. Meanwhile, many of his closest allies are out in the Outer Rim governing his territories. As well as this, many other essential Imperial leaders, such as the head of the ISB, Yalarin, and numerous other Moffs are all housed in the Death Star, which Tarkin controls. So, he has access to them before they can react to what he's about to do. Imperial Senate. The Imperial well Senate will no longer be of any concern to us. I have just received word that the Emperor has dissolved the Council permanently. The last remnants of the Old Republic have been swept away. Well, that's impossible. How will the Emperor maintain control without the bureaucracy? The regional governors now have direct control over their territories. Fear will keep the local systems in line. Fear of this battle station. Realistically, Tarkin holds all the cards at this point, which really emphasises the amount of trust Sidious had in him. Now, you may be thinking, well, what about Vader? He's on board the Death Star, and if Tarkin tries to do anything against Sidious, he's going to step in. Well, first of all, I reckon Tarkin would probably have thought this through. Even Vader would not be able to defeat the countless security systems and forces the Death Star had. But I don't think it would come to that. You see, although in Legends, Vader was the one who killed Tarkin's son, Tarkin knows that Vader is just a puppet of Sidious, and I really think that he would see the value of having the Sith Lord on his side. So, I think that Tarkin would offer Vader a place in his new regime. Now, remember, Vader doesn't like Sidious. He's still pretty angry about the whole Padme thing, and we know he isn't totally loyal from how quickly he offered Luke a place at his side on Cloud City. Now, I believe that Vader would realistically happily join Tarkin, as Tarkin sees Vader more of an equal rather than Sidious who treats him as a lackey. So, we're going to say for the theory that Vader decides to join Tarkin, so what happens next? 
Well, the Death Star jumps into hyperspace to the Coruscant system. Now, this is going to alert a lot of people, key of which is Sidious. The weapon is then used to destroy the planet, and I mean fully destroy. There's no way that Tarkin would risk Sidious surviving by only using a fraction of the station's power. Now, you may be thinking the crew of the Death Star would never do this, they would disobey the order. Well, I doubt this. You'd have to be very foolish or very brave to disobey an order from Tarkin, even if it didn't make sense. Now, the Empire's seat is destroyed along with a large part of the Empire's infrastructure. Now, Tarkin addresses the Moth's governors and military leaders both inside the Death Star and around the galaxy, ordering them to pledge loyalty to his new regime. And realistically, I think a lot of them would do just that. You see, Tarkin just destroyed a planet with a population of over 2 trillion people. I mean, there's no better way of proving that you mean business than that. Even if not all of the Imperial leaders chose to join Tarkin, enough would that a sizeable armada would form, and those who didn't want to join would have nowhere to flee, with Tarkin loyalists controlling the entirety of the Outer Rim, so it would only be a matter of time before they were hunted down and destroyed. His enemies would be felled in one swoop. Meanwhile, the Rebels' attack on the Death Star would fail because the Death Star would be half a galaxy away. Tarkin would likely use this to trap the Rebels and would probably order an orbital bombardment of Yavin 4 just to be sure. From here, Tarkin and his new regime have a lot of work to do. In destroying Coruscant, they destroyed a lot of the Empire's infrastructure, banking, logistics, and a lot of things are going to have to be rebuilt and reordered, and a lot of positions are going to have to be refilled. But that's just going to draw more people into joining Tarkin, because there's going to be high positions available for those who are loyal to him. I believe he would likely head his empire from the Death Star, as it's mobile and relatively impenetrable, assuming no one else finds out about the exhaust ports. Vader would probably hold a high position in this empire, and would likely operate freely and with a great deal of authority, with Tarkin controlling the more intricate and important parts of the empire. Realistically, an empire under Tarkin could be considerably more powerful than it was under Sidious. Tarkin was a brutal man, and had no reservations about using great force to deal with troublesome citizens and scaring a populace into line. However, he's considerably less psychopathic than Sidious. He would likely run a fairer government, one that didn't discriminate against aliens. They would be relatively free to do as they wished as long as they obeyed his laws, and Tarkin would entrust more people to do tasks. His government would be far more decentralised than Sidious was, and could potentially last longer than Sidious's empire ever did. The government would continue to be autocratic and militaristic, possibly even more so than it was under Sidious. Tarkin would continue to expand his navy, building battle stations and ships bigger and more powerful than the Death Star with the aim of bringing total control to his galaxy, including the Outer Rim territories that he'd meticulously governed. And I believe that after this, he would set his sights on the Unknown Regions, ready to stake a claim into further fresh territories. Of course, Tarkin, unlike Sidious, can't sustain himself through dark side powers, so he would eventually die. And remember, he was 64 when the Death Star was destroyed. And when he did, a successor, likely one of the other Moths, would take over. But unlike Sidious, who was focused on his rule and his time in power alone, Tarkin, I believe, would want his empire to far outlast him. But what do you think an empire under Tarkin would look like? Do you think it would be successful, or do you think it would fall at the first hurdle? Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed, please like and sub for more, as it really helps the channel grow, and it's really appreciated. Also, follow me on Twitter at TheLawGuy for regular updates. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.